Hello guys, hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, yep, so I've had some more ideas. <laughs> um, basically the project's going to change a bit, but at this point the project is well and truly like burnt out for me. Um, so I'm not going to be doing any real asset work, I'm going to see how far I can get in comp. Um, and then we will do... Um, t there'll be two streams basically. This stream will be figuring out like a final image. And the next stream will be in a few days after I've had time to render out all the passes that I need. Um, just because the renders do take a while now. Um, the foreground, so this render was four and a half hours. Because this um, ruffle is just ludicrously heavy. So, yeah, I, I want to um, obviously avoid doing too much duplicate work. And the project's now getting to that point of diminishing returns. So, the current renders that we have, like raw renders, is this. So, this is a finished... Um, foreground and a noisy background as you can still see the buckets uh, but overall it works um, after looking at it for a little while I'm realizing it still feels kind of flat like as an image it's kind of interesting we can push it further in comp but the lighting is very front on which was intentional but after looking at the reference again like the original painting I kind of miss having the uh, the shadow on the cheek um, because originally when we were doing the older composition, we were matching it more closely. Um, the lighting really brought out the forms a lot more interestingly. So I kind of want to redo the lighting a little bit. However, I don't also want to lose all the lighting we've already done. So I've done a little bit of testing. I'm going to show you the, the comp that I've done on these images. And then I'll show you kind of what I'm currently testing and what we'll be focusing on today. Um, now, quick disclaimer, I am not a comp guy. So... You know, don't expect all of this to be like clean setups or anything like that. It's, it's not what I do. But anyway, this is our raw render. Um, I've done a little bit of comp off stream, nothing too major. So we'll just walk through it. So we have our background. Uh, this I'll turn on later. Uh, I'm adding in some of that diffuse, uh, a direct light again. So it takes me from that to that, just to get a little bit more like kind of interest in there. And then copying in my normals, copying in my Z depth. I'm doing a little bit of relighting, so I don't like... Uh, hey Ian, how you doing? So I feel like the mask, I wanted a bit more shape on that. So I'm doing a little bit of relighting in comp to kind of get this. Uh, again, this like with without. So uh, this is the, the raw render. This is comp so far. Uh, to me, this is a lot more interesting, at least for the mask. We're then adding a glow, adding some defocus, adding some chromatic aberration, and then we're merging in the foreground which has had the exact same stuff done so it gets to this add some vignette and then that's our kind of image that we have so far at least with the old composition so we're going from this to this um, or more accurately let me just grab you so that's what we're doing in comp so far uh, or like what i've done off stream so it improves it a lot i mean adding the um adding the direct light helps a lot like it stops it from feeling so flat because this feels incredibly flat this feels like more dynamic but it still doesn't feel right um it places a lot more focus on the face but as i said the lighting is far too flat so off stream uh i've done some very very choppy lighting renders uh which is this much much more directional light uh it's intentionally very very strong uh in terms of like contrast and in comp, I'm just blending those two together. So I'm not getting rid of my old lighting setup because there are aspects of it that I quite like. Um, so that merge that I was talking about at the top, what that does is it just blends in a little bit that more di uh, directional render for both um, for both of these. Now I haven't rendered this different lighting on its own layers yet. Uh, so this is that that raw render. I haven't rendered it on its own layers so to separate the foreground and background. So we do have some edge problems. So even if I pre-molt this, we're still going to have some problems with that. So um, yeah, there are a few little edge problems that will appear while I do this. But that will be fixed once I do the, the full renders. But as I blend this in, we're just going to transition from one lighting setup to the other. Uh, so if I put it all the way to one, obviously we get to this. Um, which is like fully the other one. It still has all the adjustments from the other image. It still has the direct lighting on the mask and the relight. Um, but it just, it feels a bit more dynamic. So I want to basically, during this stream today, play with this image, add things in comp that I want to add. 
Um, it will be probably a relatively short stream, just because I'm not, again, I'm not a comp artist. I don't necessarily know how to do a lot of the stuff that I want to do. So we'll be kind of exploring. Um, but yeah, so for now, I'm going to set the mix amount to 0.7. Because this feels directional enough to me. I might change that. In fact, I might add a roto now to change that. So let's go... Um, let's create a roto. So... Get the background. Let's extend this out. Cool. Let's get a, a dot node in there. And connect that mask up. So what we might have to do is create something more dynamic in this, because something that um, Jesus pointed out to me is how, uh, if we just discount this for a moment, when it's fully transitioned over to this heavier lighting, the left side of the image looks much, much more interesting. Um, like this, this side, the contrast here is very interesting. It's Jesus, so I was chatting to about it. Uh, this side is quite interesting at 100%. At 0.7, which is where I like the overall image, like where I like the face, it's lost a bit of that. It's still more interesting than this, but it's still not as interesting as, as that. So I kind of want to get a little bit of a, a gradient in this, um, which we're going to do with this roto. So let's just connect that up, connect you up, and let's just do some quick rotos. So we want it to be stronger in this area, so I'm going to create a... We're the best way to do this. Where the hell's my tools? Um, workspace, compositing. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here. Cool. So I'm just going to go into this guy. I'm going to create a... I'm just go over regular Bezier for now. So we want this area to get the full strength, so let's just go like something like that. Cool. Okay, we need to get rid of the alpha channel. I don't know if there's a way to like remove the alpha on the input. Be helpful. Uh, but yeah, so go back to this. So this is now fully transitioned over, like 100%. So if that's set all the way over there. So I can now feather this out a lot. Let's go 500. Oh, not that, feather. And we can see it kind of blends over. So view that. So we need a much larger radius than that. Let's go 2,000. That was get me a nice little gradient around that area. So what we can do now is just grade that. So I'm going to put that into RGBA. Okay, actually, I'm not going to put that into RGBA. Let's keep that in, in alpha. Grade. And we're going to grade the alpha on this guy. And we can gamma this to get like the amount of blend that we want. And we're going to need that same mask connected here. I'll clean that up later. And let's just go down. grade. So we can gamma that and it will change how it transitions over.
kind of works. What's the value here? 0.3. Oh. There we go. So that's a value of 1. That's a value of 0.5. Here's a value of 0.8. Okay, so let's gamma that back a little bit. I want the face area. So like here, dead center of the image. To be around 0.7. So a little bit less gamma. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. Maybe a little bit less gamma. Cool. Feels a bit flat again though. Okay. So we've got that working. Um, so I'm wondering how, how do I lay this out in a, a way that allows me to share this without it being really gross. We could put this in the middle of the two of them, I guess. So let's just bring you all the way up. If we had to put that like over there. That's uglier, isn't it? How can we do this? So something else that was pointed out to me is that this is really saturated in the blue. So I want to create a color correct. And I want to desaturate the blues. I'm not entirely sure what the best way to do that is. Let me try. Oh no, it changes all of it. All right, cool. Uh, how can I get rid of some blue then? I know I can multiply it by a red tone. That will slightly reduce it. But it also affect everything else. Um... Okay, so it's green and blue that need to go down. Or we can increase the red in the shadows. Okay. Is it mid-tones? So that counts as? <laughs> that affects everything, alright. Oh god, I wish I knew how to use Nick. <laughs> it's something I really need to learn how to do. And I could just desaturate it globally, but... Oh no. I know there's a way to like select ranges. Like, is it the Kia? Luminance, saturation key. But then it's catching that as well. Wait, is the blue screen key actually working in this case? No. There we go.
So if we use that to desaturate, like use that as a mask. Uh, oh, so it's saturation. There we go. That's better. It affects the yellows quite a lot. So we probably need to... How can I stop this from affecting... Kill the blues a little bit. It's keeping the ear alone mostly. It might be affecting those yellows a bit much. I guess it's being killed quite a lot by this merge, isn't it? Yeah, actually, no. Let's go to that, because the merge is already killing that blue. So we don't need it anymore. Cool. So, okay. Liking the relight. What's our values getting to? They're getting above one. Is that because of the glow? No. But the glow's actually kind of killing a little bit. Tweak our depth of field. Uh, I want to preview our focal plane setup. Let's increase the depth. So I have a bit more of the mask in focus. Um, the eye is obviously the, the peak of it, but. Let's get a bit more of that in focus. Something we need to do as well is share. Uh, the attributes from this, so I'm gonna copy this, copy links, and then go to this defocus, and then paste relative. That keeps them both in sync. Um, I'm also going to get the, I guess size we can keep separate for a bit. Let's go. That's layer set up. Okay. Obviously, when we get a cleaner render, it'll help as well. Looking forward to when we get rid of this as well. Um, I am going to change... Let's change the size, actually. So let's copy this over. Copy links. Uh, size... 
Uh, paste. Paste relative. Let's keep it all the same. And then maximum we're going to increase as well. Copy links. And then let's paste relative. Cool. So we can change the amount of defocus now. Keep it a little bit more uniform. So I'm also wondering like how out of focus I want the foreground to be. Just gonna increase this to like 60, so we have a little bit more wiggle room. Let's go like there, see what that looks like. Okay. So there's two things I want to add or play with. Uh, one of them is the level of contrast in the iris. I kind of want to make that pop a little bit. Uh, and the other one is I want to add some soot to the mirror um, to kind of you know show that this candle's been melting there for a while. Uh, I also kind of want to liquefy the the light a little bit, which we should probably do actually. Um, so we've got this built up. Obviously we need to liquefy all of it. Um, I'm not sure what liquefy is actually called in this. So we've got the relight. I'm guessing we'll do it after the relight. Because we definitely want to do it before this stuff. Um, so let's pull all this up. Okay. So I'm going to backdrop these guys. Uh, lens effects. So I'm pretty sure it's all lens effects. Yeah, it is. I'm uh, going to get rid of that transform because I don't like it anymore. If you're wondering why I'm doing all this twice, it's just because if I do depth field on the foreground and background at the same time, we get this line here. Um, this line is just caused by the fact that the uh, the foreground, I haven't separated this guy. So that will get fixed in render. Uh, right, so I guess let's um, start changing the background a little bit. So I don't know how to liquefy something. <laughs> um, I guess we can use a distort. Uh, all right, because distort is going to okay. How do you warp something? Oh yeah, warp. That's not what I want. I don't want grid warp either, honestly. Okay, we'll do the um the sun and the mirror first then. So let's create um I guess we'll do a grade. And what we'll probably want to do is paint something in critter to get that kind of soot effect. Uh so I'm gonna open that up. We'll just save out an image uh for that. And for now, we'll just throw a roto in there, just so we can kind of tweak it. Uh, we want a roto paint. Okay. Okay. So for now, we'll just do something like that. Okay. I'm just going to change the black point to be way higher. Oh, I guess that's not going to work. Okay, because we're going to do a few things for this, aren't we? We're going to blur. Then grade it. Multiply it down. There you go. Obviously, it's a really sketchy drawing, but... And we want to desaturate it as well, I guess. Um, cool. So, blur that to see what happens. Yeah, that can work once you got something that's a bit nicer. So, 
Yeah, in and of itself, that kind of already starts to work. I'm going to move that saturation before the grade, though. to do a square. Let's do 1024 by 1024. Okay. I'm just going to create an alpha. So create a layer. Fill that to black. Okay. Hey, Nick. Yeah, I'm, I'm attempting to do some comp. I'm not very good at comp, but... Uh, right, so let's get some kind of way to make a sooty brush. I need to get my Wacom. Uh, Becca, is that Wacom plugged in? Yep. Can you unplug it? Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I know nothing, but I think you should do better. That's Alex, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, the, the name Lopez is the reason I think that. <laughs> uh, right, so let's get a brush. Okay, so let me get some images of soot on, soot on glass. So what we want to achieve is like this kind of effect. Obviously, this is art done using it. So we're going to need something kind of smudgy. Hey Dominic, how's it going man? Uh, are there any images of soot just on glass without being kind of crazy? This effect is kind of cool. So it has all sorts of color shifts in it, which is kind of fascinating actually. It's got like blue tint on the edges. So we might have to do something with that. It could be really cool. Yeah, okay, so we'll go for something kind of wispy. Um, I'm going to do two of these, I guess. Um, so let's, let's get something like that for now. I'm going to basically smudge this into oblivion. So I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate layer, hide it, and then what smudge brushes do I have? Bit too smooth, isn't it? Oh, that could kind of work. Although I feel like I should do a second pass to see kind of what comes out of this. It's producing a really cool feather effect. Okay, so let me hide that one and do another one. Uh, duplicate layer mask. And then what other brushes do I have that could do this? Uh, that one's just smoothing it out a bit too much. Remember, if one of these smudges really, really well. Not that one. That's for sure. 
Nope. 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 One of them will smudge. There we go. This one smudges up a bit more texture, which might be interesting. It's not necessarily accurate, but accurate isn't honestly what I care about most of the time. I think the first one was definitely more successful in terms of like feeling like soot. Textures. Okay, then if we go back in with a blur brush from before to like even it back out. Just kind of smudge that. Is there a smoother version of this brush? Let's go with this one. Just move that down. And that should do. Alright. In fact, let's just size it up a little bit. Cool. File, save as. And then we're going to save this to uh, CG stuff, projects, personal projects, um, peril grin, comp. Um, masks, drop, mirror, and then this is going to be soot, I know, is it S-U-T? No, it is S-W-O-T, soot, A, uh, M-S-K, cool, and honestly, like, JPEG is fine. Uh, what effect are you trying to do? I want to do like soot on the glass, like just above the candle flame. So obviously it's a really rough um, thing there, but if I do a read now, I know I could have tapped R. I just for some reason missed it. Um, D projects, person projects, Gustav Doré, comp, masks, prop mirror. Okay. Deactivate that for now. Shuffle. Grab the R, put it into A. Well, that's a bit big. Okay, so I'm going to reformat. Don't know why you've gone there, but okay. Let's move all this down. Let's reformat that to the root format. Good. Why are they broken? over quickly. Okay, so transform. Scale. Let's get a bit smaller. Why 
is this? No, because I'm doing transform first. Idiot. There we go. So, let's grade that a little bit. Gamma. Is that too big? It's probably too strong, isn't it? Let me just preview the end. Yeah, definitely too strong. Let's uh, transform it down even further. So, saturation, let's go a little bit lower. So saturation is controlling how much the orange glow affects it. Uh, oh, uh, try throwing in a noise uh, on it to, uh, wait, sorry. Try throwing in a noise breakup on uh, close to the base of the reed. Sorry, I'm not sure I'm quite following, Nick. Um, on which bit, sorry? Like, on the actual this? It's like, get some breakup in the, in there with a, a noise, or somewhere further down? Okay, let's uh, reduce how dark that fingers. I feel like I should kind of skinny it out a bit. Okay. Need to place that so it's actually above. There we go. Uh, noise at the base of the texture. Okay, so this guy. Cool, cool. Uh, let me move that down. Also, let me just knee and knees up a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, backdrop. Uh, there we go. Mirror, uh, soot. The other candle is a little bit far away from the mirror, so I don't think it would really. Uh, I could also have it, I don't know if you have this in render or comp, highlight dust on the glass itself. Um, it's in the render. So you mean like have the glow affect the dust a bit more? Or have the um, sorry the candle affect the dust a bit more to show you like what what is happening in comp. So basically, wait, I need to turn off this guy. Oh yeah, I need to figure out how to clean this up because I need these two to share the same mask, and I haven't figured out quite how yet in terms of like having it clean. Uh, but if I turn this guy to zero, so comp so far is doing this. So if you ignore Oh. Uh, why is that being ignored now? Oh. Weird. So. Comp is doing this, basically. So we're doing a bit of relighting on the mask. We're adding this soot, which is still a bit too strong. I might blur it as well. Um, and then it's adding a bit more of the direct lighting. So the dust that's on the um, on the mirror and all this stuff is getting a little bit more uh, emphasis as well as the top of the box. It's a bit more interesting. Also adding a little bit of aberration which actually is too strong. Let me just reduce that. Uh, let's go 999 and then I'll do the same thing on here. Oh. Cool. 
Yeah, that's better. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's what's happening in comp. Uh, I've got this other render, which I'm currently just adding on top. Um, let's set that to one. Uh, just with a different lighting. I quite like the blend. So I've got a roto to drive the blend, so it's a little bit more over here than it is over here. That's still too strong, isn't it? Um, there we go. A bit better. Uh, right, so let's get a noise on that as well. So, um, pull that down a bit, make a bit more room. Merge. Noise. And I'm just going to multiply these. Um, wrong place. Yeah, it's definitely a bit strong. Okay. So it's just weakening the whole thing. I should probably do that after then, shouldn't I? Still very weak. Such a huge effect, it's like holy fuck. Is it like a blending color space? This doesn't feel right. This feels like it's doing way too much. I sent you a pic um, on Facebook. Oh, you mean actually on the, um, the dust of the mirror, okay. Cool, cool. I can, uh, yeah, give it a go. Okay, so, so why is this having such a huge, huge effect? Oh, I'm also cutting a lot of it out. I need to change that reformat. Uh, resize type fit. Although, oh no, fill just widens it, yeah, so fit. of a difference. Just a little bit, because it seems to be really strong for some reason. There we go. Yeah, it's got a bit of variation in there. Could probably do that in the texture itself, but that's fine. Let's just get this bumped up. Okay. Hey Jennifer, how you doing? Okay, so you think get some kind of dots around this. Um, let's see what we can do. God, I hate this so much. Um, there has to be a clean way to organize this. I 
I mean, it's just bothering me so much. Now let's put it up there, get rid of this. You don't need a background in the shuffle, right? And then dot node. Oh no, that one, not that one. I'm aware this is really messy. I'm just sorting it out for a sec. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to backdrop that. That's really hideous, though. That's so ugly. Um, backdrop. Come on. Fuck off them. Um, light rig blend mask. Not the prettiest. And it'll work, but it's, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, let's try to get some speckles on the mirror. So let's go noise. Um, let's do a merge. And we will... We only need to merge something that's like roughly this color, so let's create that. Grab that constant familiar, merge that over. Um, then we'll use this to mask it. Beautiful. So, uh, if you go into the node on the side attribute, you can hide inputs. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'll quickly sort this out and then. So let's get some speckles on the mirror. Like that. copy it and pre-mult it, but A, B doesn't matter in this case, because it's a multiply. Okay, let's just grab a ellipse, go around this guy, feather that out, let's go 50, no, 200. Need to mask it onto the mirror. Let's reduce that a little bit. Let's go 100. Okay. So you can hide mask inputs. Set link. Okay, let me just. I'm gonna alt save this actually. Save as. Oh, wait, went to the wrong place. Comp. Cool. So let's put this back over there. So I guess luckily this link already has like a visual connection down here, so it's pretty easy for me to piece that together. Um, so how... Uh, if you go into the node side of the attribute, you can hide inputs. The thing is like, I don't want to hide inputs, I just want to hide... So once I had the mask. Okay. 
Is it possible to just hide like, a specific input? Like... If I... Oh, I could hide input on this guy, I guess. No? Oh yeah, I can. There we go. Hilarious. Okay, let's just quickly do that. And I'm going to put a little sticky note here. Uh, connected to light rig blend mask. That's a really nice feature. Okay. So let's get that over there. I'll keep this. Um, you can also use a postage stamp also. Oh, okay. In this case it's a merge over so it kind of gets a bit confusing. Yeah, I love postage stamps. They're so cool. Okay. So let's get this guy. Let's set that to one. After the dot, huh? Oh, there's supposed to be some node. How does that do? So I guess we'd have to shuffle that. To see it, oh, I can get rid of that. Uh, let's shuffle you. Okay, and just throw that into the. Oh wait, we want that into there even. Does that now show up? Oh, it does. Sick. All right. So then you go to the node. That's really cool. Thank you for letting me know about that. Right, so. Got the ba uh, background building up. We need to remove that from there. So let's just... Um, I'm going to call this... Um, so that's only visible in the alpha. Okay, I'm gonna multiply again. And then we're gonna create a roto. Cool. And this one, let's move it down a little bit. Let's temporarily connect that there. Now that you've shown me that fucking hide input shit, <laughs> I'm going to be using it everywhere. Okay, so we can roto this guy out. Uh, so we just need to remove. I, I don't. I think we can get away with. Oh no, we definitely need to roto, roto those out. Oh, because that affects the alpha as well. Is there a way to like, kill the alpha before it gets in?
But I don't understand why background has to be visible. For now, I'll just disconnect it. And then this one. Oh, wait. That's going to be what that is, isn't it? No, it's not. Never mind. Okay. Um, let's just quickly draw some rotos. So, Bezier. I'm going to start in that corner. Doesn't have to be too precise. There we go. Okay, and then create another one. Can I just click there? There we go. Okay, let's give that a very slight feather. Let's go like four pixels. Same on this guy. Um, I haven't figured out how to do crypto mats in Catania yet. It's a wee bit of a bitch. Okay, now we're just going to uh, invert that. I guess technically we should have it come across here as well. So, um, let's connect across that. That's just the shadow that's been cast. So let's get a line about there and feather this guy as well. That's already feathered. Oh, yeah, it applies to all of them. Alright, cool, cool. Hello. I feel like that base rotor needs to be smaller. Let's go 100. And let's just... Backdrop. Um, mirror. What do you call this? Mirror particles. Candle particles. Uh, candle spots.
are too small, they're getting filtered out. We'd have to make them a lot brighter for them to uh, work. Although I guess we can actually get away with making them brighter. Because they're being lit by a candle that's right there, so actually their value can go above one. Let's grade that. And that'll bring them back. Yeah, that feels a bit better. That sets feeling a bit much. Let's change that darkness. Feels like it should be bigger. Situation's a bit much, isn't it? Like there. Oh yeah, I always forget about exposure nodes. Let me uh fix that. Black point. So I guess that needs to go backwards. Zero. I oh, call cool, that already linked. Cool. Gang. Is that just allowed them to be separated? Yeah, it does. We would need to get rid of that. Oh yeah, the soot. This needs to happen before the soot. Um, I do love that you can shake nodes loose. There we go, that's better. Okay. So let's get that back in there a little bit. Is there a glint node? There is. What's it look like by default? I'll just add that like near the end. Well, technically, it should go here, right? Because it's a reflection on the lens. No idea how to use them. What's tolerance? There it is. Okay, so number of rays. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so number of rays, let's go to. Actually, kind of stretches out the fire, which is good. Uh, tolerance would need to go all the way up. It's reaching above one there. What value is it reaching here? It reaches 42 in there. Alright, okay, so I can just increase its tolerance, right? If I go like 2. Yeah, okay, so we just need to find a, a good number for it. I actually kind of like what that's doing. Let's go 20. Okay, so it's, let's go 15. Um, 10. Do 
you don't know disables. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that. You can tell that I don't work in in. <laughs> um, so this isn't what this node is made for at all. Actually, it makes it look very intense. Just, oh Jesus, ah, that's kind of cool. Just making color swatches for me. We need to change the width though. Uh, from color. Nah, I'm gonna get rid of that. The glow is doing a lot of the work for me. Could use a Kia. Yeah, to kind of isolate these guys down here. That's a good point. That's the thing, because I guess the problem I've got with comp is I haven't really figured out yet how to work in a way that like is visual within this. Like I know that if someone was to pick this up there'd be a bit of confusion to begin with, like in terms of structure. Like it's not very clean. Um like why do I have two shuffles, for example? So I'm shuffling out that, but like I could just uh, multiply. Can I just do a multiply math? Multiply merge. Don't need that. Okay, so we want to multiply the alpha. How come that's killing it? Actually, we just want to multiply the alphas. We don't want to multiply everything. Uh, although that should work anyway, right? Oh, there we go. Cool, cool. Behold my beautiful roto. So to me, that makes more visual sense than what we just had. And this is plugging red into the alpha, but then... I don't know, that's fine. Yeah, we'll keep that. Yeah, I need to fix this edge. That will happen when I uh, render properly. Either way though, it's starting to look okay. Web's visible. This doesn't have the glow it should. Be the best way to do that. Another way to do that would be to uh, merge of a mask, A input alpha mask, B input beauty. As in like literally merge, um, like copy basically the alpha from this onto that and pre-mult.
So ignoring this edge. I feel like I want a bit more than that. Let's go back to 30. And then I can reduce this to 40. Oh yeah, the eye. I wanted to boost the eye up, didn't I? Okay, merchant of change input to mask. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. That's cool. I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that would need to be set to alpha. And that then gets set to mask. Oh, okay, that's cool. Is I'm guessing there's a performance advantage to doing that just alpha then mask? Or is it more just a case of this saying mask means that compers will see it in a certain way? Uh, if you change the Z to focus type to disk, I think it is set to disk, isn't it? Let me just uh, I'll view it from here. Oh yeah, no, I do need to view it down here. I'm pretty sure it is set to disk. Bladed. Oh, okay. Oh no, so this this edge here, or this really sharp one, is caused by um, like this is a very um, this is a very uh, kind of hacky job. Basically, I'm rendering this guy on his own layer, but then for the new lighting test, I didn't render it twice. I literally just rendered this. So I've had to obviously pre-mold that out um, to get it back to being close to this, but it's not a transparent background. Um, so when I'm copying all the, uh, the stuff over it, it's just not getting rid of that line properly. So, uh, oh, sorry, I was viewing the wrong point. Uh, it's visible in here, so I can't get rid of it because it's in the kind of background. But once I uh, render him on his own layer, this will go away. Because for now, that he's only rendered on his own layer for the original lighting. Hence why I can do that. Okay, eye. I want to get on the eye. Um... See this, I I don't like this area because I'm doing everything twice. But I don't think there's a way to do that without like causing edge problems when I eventually do it. Unless I could merge these images into a deep, but it's not really my area. I know fuck all about deep. I know you can do like deep from images, um, but I don't know how to use it, so I'm not going to use it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Because I could use my Z depth as as the um, actual depth in that deeper right? Okay, so we want to boost the eye at this stage. So BG relight. Yeah, let's do a. Gonna pull all this out a little bit. Create a little bit of distance. Okay, so let's create a roto. Then create a. I guess a grade will work. Although I might swap that out for a color correct. For now, I'm just going to whack that multiply up, just so I can see it working. So we want a ellipse. Okay, we're going to feather that by one pixel, maybe two pixels.
Obviously, that's like not what I want, because um, it's just a multiplier. So, uh, yeah, grade is definitely wrong. Let's go for actually. Let's do a saturation. Boost that saturation in the eye a little bit. Not that much. Let's go point two. And I want to have the bottom of the eye get a little bit more brightness. Um, so we're going to create a. Let's try an exposure. Okay, and we're going to create a separate rotor. This one will be a ramp across the bottom of the eye. So let's just go create a, a rectangle, put it down here. And then we'll control that with the feather. So let's just go merge. Let's go 10, 20, there we go. There's a ramp node specifically. Okay. Cool. Let's replace that one. There are different fall off types. Yes. Let's move zero. Okay. So that's exponential down. Can I prefer that one? So that's a better linear. Let's go and delete you and Okay, so let's color code this a little bit. Anything that is a read, I'll get this color. Can I copy this from anywhere? Is it possible to copy a color? You should be sorry. Oh, he's talking to Nick. No, no, I, I, I really, I'm really liking the, um, the knowledge. Honestly, 
like comp isn't an area I'm remotely competent in, so I'm quite enjoying learning stuff. Um, right. That's uh, actually worse, isn't it? Okay. I can delete that. Let's quickly delete any deactivated nodes. Don't want the Kodak noise. Uh, this I'm keeping for a bit, just so I can kind of flip back and forth. That really needs to be done. Let me just quickly create an AB. I just need to merge that with that. Guess what I'm about to do. Dot node. Hide input. Hide input. All right, so what's being overdone? Uh, potentially worth lowering a uh, highlight in the foreground. Um, what, this guy? This thing? I'm trying to think how to do this. I just want to expose down that bit. Okay, I guess it's a Kia. Okay, let's just. Crunchy. Too crunchy. Let's multiply it down to zero. Why so crunchy? That's even worse. Uh, 
Oh, that right, usually helps. Okay, yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you. Okay, so now we just need to find the right amount. seems healthy to me. So let's just move this. Come on. That bit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, out of curiosity. Yeah, okay. It's the sun. The candles are low, about 25% brightness. Um, okay. Let me give this a go. Um,. case we can use a grade to get that so white point let's set to like 40 black point we're gonna set to one okay maybe two okay, now set this to 20 and then gonna uh, saturation. Hey. Oh, cause the alpha's empty.
Nah. <laughs> Ain't working for me. Okay. Let me set that to zero. I feel like I'll start overworking it if I keep going. So I'm gonna... I might leave this here. Yeah, so we need clean renders to get much further. That bump to the eye might be a bit much. Save the scene and I can kill Critter. Okay. Uh, voice is looking good, I haven't seen it in a while. Thanks, man. Uh, right, okay, so. Let's just go with preset colors. Thing that is relighting. I'm going to color. Let's go with like a blue. Maybe like that one. Anything that is adding new information. I'm gonna go with like. Jesus. Okay, so that's a class is relighting. And then this one is a lens effects, which naturally needs its own color. Let's go with. Why are these so horrible? Beautiful. It's actually awful, um, but it's fine. It'll work. Better than it was with all the random colors, arguably. Okay, so we're just going to need to do some really clean renders now. Uh, which is an overnight job for a few nights, I think. Um, because I've got, got four different renders to do. So I can get one going uh, tonight after I finish playing games, and I might just quickly unplug my Wacom. Um, yeah, so I can do a little bit tonight, uh, a little bit of rendering, render out one of the layers at least. I do need to get a UV pass actually. Um, can you get those in Nuke? I think you can, right? Yeah, I think we can. Um, but yeah, so I need to get a UV pass out because um, Jesus pointed out it could be good to get some kind of embroidery on this, although it is out of focus. 
so maybe it's not worth like even the in focus version uh, which will look a little bit better in the final thing just because this has a mix of orange and blues because of the weird uh, ray settings uh, i also need to figure out how to get rid of this shit like i know i can just turn off the uh defocus for the in focus frame but because i've tried doing an edge extender and couldn't get it to work Either way. Uh, hey, by any <laughs> all caps. Hey, by any chance, have you done any on <laughs> tune eyes? Uh, no, I haven't. I did um, some tutorials on like a general eye setup, um, all of which could be applied to tunish eyes. Um, that is not really. Honestly, like the information wouldn't be much different between them. It's just a case of how much time you spend on texturing. Uh, I think I might do something stylized for my next project, though, just so it can be a little bit quicker. Uh, so if it counts like I was playing Apex now, fair enough, man. Um, yeah, no, um, I haven't done any specifically on Two Nice, but I think if you was to look at my eye tutorial that's already on my channel and just replace the realistic texturing steps. Well, I didn't really do any realistic texturing, but uh, if you replace the that kind of weird texture I did with um, something a bit more tuny, then it would be fine. Um, right. Is there anything else I wanted to add before I just go ahead and do really clean renders? I'm not sure there is. I'm a bit worried that this eye is too blurry. I might change the refraction glossiness to be zero. And we can always blur it in uh, a comp. Or it might just be the resolution and the noise combined. I'll have to do a, a test render. In fact, why not do that now? Let's go with tiny region. How sharp can it go? Thank you, Dom. Really appreciate it. So while that renders, let's find our... Uh, I'm gonna save my scene. Okay. Let's go into... Uh, prop mirror, there we go. So the glass, we want to have a super clear refraction. Transmission. roughness so I can set this to negative numbers can't I if I just set that there how much of a difference does that make on its own 
and imagine is also an element of the mirror itself. Oh, it's backplate, sorry. Um, this is the front. Specular. So we'll just set this to zero in a moment. See what it looks like. Okay, this is making a difference. It's making quite a large difference actually. See, the trouble becomes, uh, set it on to zero. This is going to change the look of the mirror as a whole, isn't it? If I render like that. But it would be nice to have that sharpness back. I could obviously always just render like a tiny section of a perfectly clean eye and comp that in. It'd give me a little bit more control, wouldn't that? Let me just catalog this guy. Sharper still. speeds up the render times too, which is funny. Okay, I'm going to do a test render of this, uh, which I will have to leave running for a while to see how it looks. Um, okay, well I guess that's a place to end the um, the stream because I literally just need to leave this rendering for a while now so I can see you know do I want to actually remove all blur from the mirror because although having a perfectly shiny surface is not good thematically it is good um, for seeing the eye <laughs> so I can always blur it in comp if I just literally select the mirror um, or Roto the mirror, sorry. Or even get an ID for it. I need to learn how to do uh, IDs and that sort of shit. I know how to do it in Random Man, but I haven't figured out how to do it in uh, Arnold yet. Because I haven't tried yet. But yeah. That definitely helps. Helps the viewer connect and all that shit. Yeah, I'll just have to leave that going for a while. We'll see if we lose too much detail on the glass. Do I have a clean render of this somewhere? So it's going to change everything that's in this mirror. Yeah, I'll use this as a comparison. But yeah, that'd be it for now, I guess. Um, I'll be streaming again probably in a few days, just because I need to uh, have time to get all the renders I need. I've got four different renders I need to do to a clean standard. Um, technically five, but the Z depth one takes like five minutes. So, um, I need to render a separate 
Uh, I need to do a separate render for the ZDEF pass so that uh, the mesh of the ruffle doesn't fuck it up too much. Uh, but yeah, so I'll I'll see how this goes. Anyway, that'd be it for now. Um, maybe we can rebuild from um, all these different layers so I can just blur the uh, transmission specifically. In fact, that's probably what we'll do. We have transmission, we have specular, we have diffuse, uh, we have indirect and direct. So we can rebuild the core stuff from that. Subsurface. Yeah, we can rebuild everything from that. I'll have to double check, but we may just rebuild everything in the next, next one. So we can just blur the um, the refraction back to what it was. Now we'll get the effect we want. We can also roto that. Anyway, um, I'm gonna stop babbling now. Yeah, so I'm gonna head off, uh, leave this rendering uh, for a few days. Just need to render these nodes essentially. Um, obviously, I can't render all the time though, so it will be over overnight a few times. Um, any advice on how to go about learning all this look dev stuff? Uh, start simple. I strongly, strongly recommend starting with material studies. Um, so uh, get like a shader ball or something. Find an image online of something you want to replicate and try to create that. Uh, by all means, do some procedurally, do some with textures. It's, it's up to you, honestly. Um, I mean, do what I say and not, not what I do. Um, Try to avoid being overly procedural because you want to develop your skills in painting. Um, I've got the problem of like I always do things procedural as like the default, but sometimes I get lazy and just refuse to do it in textures when it should be textures. So I guess at an early stage, try to avoid that. Um, don't worry about the complex shit. That comes with time. Um, obviously, there are people who pick up the complex stuff really quickly. I'm not one of them. Um, I've been doing look dev now like as something on the side for six years. So, I mean, I, I think I started doing like, dev, like actually trying to do shaders in like second year of uni, which is almost seven years ago now. Um, so, yeah, don't get too worried about the techie side. Just kind of learn what diffuse is, what subsurface is, what uh, specular, what transmission are. Like, learn what they all are um, and how they play together. Things like, oh, when you add transmission, it basically masks out everything other than spec. Like, diffuse gets masked out by transmission. Like, learn that sort of shit. Um, and, yeah, you'll you'll build it up. Just build the fundamentals first. Don't worry about um, fancy shading stuff. Like, you know, right, I, say, I say fancy, but, like, you know, things like um, ray switches and two-sided shaders and that sort of stuff. Like, don't worry about that. Just make materials that look cool. And yeah, start with a, a shader ball. Shader balls, if you aren't aware, just in case, because uh, I don't know what level you're at. If I create a, a search shader ball, so stuff like this. Um, if you create um, an, an asset like this, you can download them in quite a lot of places and just go find materials. Either material studies online, mastering CGI, the, the stuff from uh, Grant Warwick is pretty good. Um, but yeah, just find materials online um, of like real photos and just try to replicate them on these. Uh, these are particularly nice, like this is a beautiful material. Um, but yeah, don't worry about matching perfectly for now, you just want to learn what all the material settings are doing first. Uh, this is very subsurface, I kind of like it. But yeah. Any recommendations on where to go for finding learning material? Um, it's been a while since I checked out any documentation. Um, in something that I always come back to is the V-Ray material uh, documentation. Um, so if I uh, if I had to search V-Ray material, and if we go on to this, something that is really really nice is if you go into the V-Ray material documentation. Doesn't matter whether it's um, doesn't matter whether it's Max or Maya, they have these really cool sliders, um, which allow you to see what every single setting is doing. 
Uh, obviously, there's a certain amount of translation that has to happen. Like this is V-Ray documentation, uh, but obviously in Arnold, you know, glossiness is is not there. It's roughness instead, which is the opposite of this. But fundamentally, this these sliders will teach you a lot. I really, really love um, this documentation. Arnold and Renderman's documentation is good, but they have nothing on V-Ray. Like, it's just so good. So yeah, just learn from this, is what I'd say. So yeah, V-Ray material, it's just the chaos um, documentation. You can learn quite a lot about shading from this. This is like, it covers kind of the techie side as well. But yeah, and it has all this for lots of other stuff as well. Um, it covers many, many parts. You know, scatter color and all that sort of shit. Scale. And there's like written documentation of like what each of these things is actually doing. Uh, sheen glossiness. It's an amazing resource. Honestly, I always forget like how good this is. It just keeps going. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is. Oh, energy preservation. So that'd be like very subtle stuff changing. I can't see it on my screen. But yeah. There we go. Reach the bottom. Uh, but yeah, they've got documentation on individual parts as well. So you can like look at uh, their R surface. And I think it has these sliders for a lot of it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you do. So the L surface is something obviously you can use in Arnold as well, uh, although it is outdated at this point. But L surface is kind of like a lot of stuff is based on it, so you can learn quite a lot from that. Yeah, very documentation, fucking incredible shit. Uh, anyway, I'm going to head off now. Uh, oh god, we're losing all that stuff. Yeah, this is going to require some work, I think. Anyway, right, time for me to go. Uh, enjoy your night, guys. And I'll come back in a few days and we'll do our last stream. Uh, we'll just kind of create the final render. Try to balance everything out. And then a few days after that, I'll render some kind of breakdown stuff and get it on our station. And if we can figure out what project to do next. I know we've got the Ratatouille stuff. I'm going to put that on hold for a while just because doing this stuff with the Foundry, I feel like Ratatouille probably isn't the best asset to continue working on while I do this stuff with Katana. So I will get back to it at some point, just in case of when. Uh, but yeah, anyway, enjoy the rest of your night, guys, and I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.